YouTube, Brian Phillips coming with something new and exciting. 1.1 meter E-Flight T28. We're gonna fly this on 4S 2200. Look at that nice clean package. We got a new Spectrum AR631 receiver in there. We're gonna see how this thing goes. This has safe select and AS3X. Here goes nothing, guys. You good, camera crew? Mm-hmm. Oh man. Whoa. <laughs> That's pretty good <laughs> vertical. Need a little bit of down trim. Okay. Lots of power on 4S. Thing flies really good. Very floaty. Crap. FedEx is coming. Man, that looks good. Do you want me to? A little bit of elevator there. Keep A lot filming. more. Pause. Film. Okay. Hi. Hi. Pretty good. good. Looks like you got another one for us. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Thank you. Have a good one, man. You too. Man, the 4S, it does good on 4S. Yeah, it does. It looks so good. Really easy to see, real zippy. Let's see some slow flight performance when our delivery agency takes off, pun intended. Is he gonna have room? He'll be fine. Okay. He's a professional. <laughs> I love the yellow. Yeah, the yellow is really easy to see today. Yeah. We've been having some uh, less than stellar weather. Upside down performance is okay. Not quite enough elevator to keep it doing what I want. I'm really liking the way it looks though. It's about 30% throttle there. Just kind of riding it along. This thing will forgive a lot of bad mistakes. About 40% throttle, hard rudder and aileron, a little bit of down elevator pressure there. Look how tight a circle we're in. Mm -hmm. and then full throttle, right out of it, no problems. I feel like it could use a little bit more nose weight, to be honest. I'm really applying a lot of nose or a lot of uh, down pressure on the elevator to get it to do this. But it's just, it's just uh, really easy to fly, really easy to fly. And I'm liking, I'm out of the throttle now, about 15% throttle here, just to keep it from stalling on that turn there. Really, really, really pretty up against the backdrop. Mm -hmm. The snow doesn't hurt either. So we'll go back over here. Guys, this thing would be a great plane if you're new to flying and you still, you just can't do without having a Warbird. This Warbird would be a great one. Of course, they use the T-28 to train people to fly. And, uh, it's been being used for years. Beautiful planes, love the tricycle configuration. Does a little bit easier landings than a tail dragger and not much P factor on this plane either. One issue I'm concerned about is, is this thing gonna roll out forever? Because there's no flaps. Mm. So into the throttle here, we're just gonna see if we can touch it down right here. Nice flare, and then a little bit of rudder action just to slow it down. Throttle cuts on. Okay, so let's run up there quick. We'll pause it. Okay. Okay, okay. so throttle cuts off. We're gonna take off here, about half throttle. 
That's 50% throttle. Stay put there, camera crew. <laughs> the berms do not make it easier to fly, but they sure make it more interesting. <laughs> Look at the snow guys on the roof. Okay, we're gonna try to put this down here on the runway. Right at our feet if we get lucky enough. Man, that's just gorgeous. Very cool. I feel zero hesitation on the smart pack. We are past our five minute timer by 30 seconds. Felt kind of bad because the FedEx guy showed up and we were kind of giving him the cold shoulder because we didn't want to film him. And I don't know if he realized we were filming, but those guys, they're constantly delivering out here. So I hate to be a jerk to them because we really kind of need them a lot. <laughs> like three, four times a week, mm -hmm. they're bringing stuff out. <laughs> right behind us. That thing is so pretty. Okay, so we'll probably try to take another landing here. Okay. Just a different vantage point for you here, guys. Use a little bit of rudder to slow it down if you want. Nope, probably have to go around for this. Hey, let's go up here, camera crew. Okay. I just feel like the berms have us kind of trapped, you know? Yep. What a beautiful plane though. Real easy flying, very well behaved. Floaty is all get out though. Hey, camera crew. Yep. Back here. In the middle, please. There you go, right there. Perfect. So I'm having a really tractor the prop here. She just wants to fly so bad. That was good. And I'm having to use that. I'm janking the rudder left and right. Okay, two minutes, 10 past. Let's see what we look like for voltage now. I didn't even turn on safe on that flight. It was just so good. There was just, there was just nothing else I it wanted to do. It didn't I, need it. I just wanted to keep shooting takeoffs and landings. Okay, so camera crew is gonna hold that for me. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'll just pop this off right now. Then you've got the voltage alarm. I do. The smart checker. Mm -hmm. The XBC100 smart checker. In case you guys wanted to uh, kind of have an idea of how cold it is, it's cold. Uh huh. 3.8, perfect storage voltage. Okay, so we're gonna pop in a 3S, 2200. I'm gonna show you how this works. Obviously, we'll go into it in the build video, which follows. Build radio setup. And then, of course, the maidens are at the beginning nowadays. Really liking the way this flies. I was on the 2200, we went straight to storage level voltage. And that was approximately, let's just call that six, or excuse me, seven minutes of time. Yeah. And we were not being nice to it. We were pushing it the whole time, and with it being cold, there's a good possibility on a warmer day, you'd probably get a little bit longer. You see how this one goes the other direction? That's where it goes, guys. So you can sit there and play with your CG all you want, but your battery's going there. There's not a lot of flexibility yep. on that. Now, if you wanted to put a bigger battery in there, you get a little bit more nose weight on that. Okay, so we're gonna, cam crew if you don't mind. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we'll just take off that way this time. Throttle cuts off, timer's cleared, we're at five minutes now. Good taxiing, good ground handling, but not quite super sharp enough to get in here with the berms of snow. We had just a wee bit of snow the last few days. 50% throttle again. Look at that beautiful, gorgeous takeoff. Guys, I love my 1.2 meter T28. This is the 1.1, it has fixed gear, no flaps, which I know for some of you is gonna be a bit of a turn off, but let me tell you something, when you're a new flying radio controlled pilot, as you're looking at flaps and retracts, it does complicate the matters a lot. It's a lot more to keep track of, and it's a lot more to it's a lot more to get your mind wrapped around. It's things that you have to remember. I'm not saying you can't do it and I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I definitely can tell you this. 
Okay, so there's full power. Not quite unlimited. It'll stall out about there. Okay, here we go. Full throttle, we'll do a high speed pass. Plenty of speed there on 3S, folks. Out of the throttle at the top of the loop and around. Gorgeous. Man, love the way this thing looks. Let's see if we can touch down here. You back good? Mm -hmm. Okay, going over the top of the traffic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go out here. There's a car out there, it's turning away from us, so we're good. Okay, coming back around. You wanna step off in the grass here, camera crew? Thank you. Listen how quiet it is. It's beautiful. This is just an ideal park flyer. It's just small enough that, you know, you can almost do just about anything you want. On 3S, it's a lot less powerful, more scale flight characteristics. I'm loving the way this thing flies though. Really predictable. It's got tons of throw. You can do whatever tricks you want to do. Gosh, I need to show them safe. Okay, so here's safe guys. So totally hands off, nothing touching anything right now. Here, just to show you, okay? Got a little bit of a tendency to go to the left, probably a little bit of wind we're catching. Let's try safe landing. Out of the throttle, back in the grass there, camera crew. This thing's gonna wanna carry forever though. That's full down stick there, you got plenty of down. Not enough runway. You can really yank that stick and get it to bank. There's your limited bank. Look at that. Nice flat turn. That's with full safe and full stick. No elevator or just a little teeny bit of it. That's really good bank angles. And the rudder is still allowed to do its job. It's gonna take longer to land though. Okay, out of safe. We're gonna go over here and we'll try it again. I love shooting landings with the T28. It's like one of my favorite things to do in RC. Look at that thing. It just forgives all screw ups. Okay, coming around, staying low. Okay, we're gonna try to land uphill this time. Okay. Right at our toes if we can. Nice flare and just no problems. This thing is just a daydream to fly. It just flies phenomenally. Let's see if we can take off in the 37 foot approach next. Man, that thing is gorgeous. Now you may be noticing that this is coming out real early. Yes, we had the honor and privilege of doing an early release on this beauty and uh, it is a beauty. And I know that people are gonna love this thing. If you're new to flying radio controlled airplanes and you're thinking this might be a good first plane, I think you're probably there. You could potentially start with this plane if you wanted. Are there better planes? Maybe. Just given that you can get a high wing is gonna give you just a little teeny bit more edge. But boy, I tell you what, this thing is good. It's my timer. feel like we'll probably be running a little bit closer on this one, not seven minutes like we did on the 4S, which seems a little strange to me, but whatever. Just loving the way it approaches. Like I said, we went about two minutes past the five and just had a gorgeous flight on 4S. That was obviously the first flight. This is our second flight for us, if you've been watching the whole thing. If you're curious how it goes together, it's one of the most painless installs or builds that we have done in months. Yep. And that's no exaggeration, folks. Look how good this is. The only thing I had to do on this was I had to give a bunch of clicks of trim. I'm all the way at the top of my range. That's not uncommon on these light planes sometimes. 
you'll get some of that. Did you see me trying to slip? Yep. <laughs> I slipped a little bit too close. One thing that I'm gonna tell you about this plane, and you're gonna find out if you get it, you do need a little bit of room to spread out when you're going for landings. But she'll flare with the best of them, which is just awesome. Okay, coming around, camera crew, you good? Yep. Try to do another landing this direction. You could buy this plane and just shoot landings all day and you would be totally satisfied, I promise you. It's so light on its feet and it just forgives any mistake you could possibly make because it just doesn't have any weight to it. And it's just gorgeous, but it's still strong. And you usually don't see those things together. Sure, it doesn't have retracts or flaps, but you know what? I feel like for the beginner, it's probably better that way. I can tell you this from my perspective, I love the way it looks. The landing gear tend to disappear a little bit on mm -hmm. this plane when it's flying. They're, they're obviously there, but you don't notice them. And that's one thing, when you have a prop plane like this, particularly a Warbird with a tricycle configuration, I almost feel like it looks better with the landing gear down if you're just shooting approaches all day. But the thing is, when you get up and go with it, it just goes and it just, it just does everything really well. Um, it's well detailed, it'll do three, it'll do four S, it's got safe select, which is definitely something you want if you're getting into this for the first time. Um, obviously the NX6 has been working flawlessly for us. We've been running this for about, this is like our 10th or 11th. 11. We just did our 11th yesterday and uh, don't know when they'll release, so I don't wanna say what it is, but loving it so far. It's been very good, very minimal issues, a couple of real small glitches, but this thing, and by the way, it's a brand new release, so you're gonna have a little bit of that. Um, and these things are extremely capable. Computerized transmitters, I mean, you can just do anything with them, just about. So that being said, loving this plane, very good, extremely light, extremely strong, Definitely could be a first plane if you wanted it. I think the Mini Apprentice or the Apprentice might be a very, very slight edge over this for a first plane. But this thing would be a very close second if, if I've, and I've flown all of them except for, except for the Aero, which one is the Aero Scout? I've flown the Mini Aero Scout, but mm. not the Aero Scout. Yeah. For whatever reason, I've just kind of missed that one for a while, but I'll be doing that eventually. Anyway, love this plane. Definitely check the links in the description below. If you guys are thinking about buying this, help support the channel. You can like the video, you can subscribe to the content, click the bell for notifications if you do that. We are posting all the time right now. 2200, 4S and 3S, we'll link to those. NX6, we'll link to that, and we'll link to the plane. And then below, we'll link to a bunch of other stuff too. But definitely worth serious consideration. I would buy one. If you're thinking about buying this for somebody who's getting ready to learn to fly, it would definitely be in the realm of possibility. So don't mark this off of the beginner list, definitely belongs there. That being said, guys, we really, we had a great year in 2020 on YouTube. We appreciate you guys, best audience in YouTube history. And uh, obviously there's more coming, so stay tuned. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. I have something new and exciting and previously unknown. It's right here, we're gonna open it up. You've already seen it fly because of the way we do our videos to keep you all happy. Mostly. We hope. <laughs> here goes nothing. I've been waiting a long time for this one. Mm -hmm. And it is about ready to happen and I'm excited. And there's a lot more of that gonna be happening in 2021, but I can't tell you anymore. Oh, gorgeous. Look at this. Oh, yes. Ooh. Look at that fancy dance little thing. The T28 Trojan in the 1.1 meter size class. This is a new plane and you have not seen it before. You may have seen the old one in the orange and white or international orange and white scheme. This is in a yellow scheme. Like so without yellow. further ado, we are going to be opening this up. This is a high speed sport airplane for intermediate to experienced pilots, evidently. So we're gonna find out whatever that means. I have the 1.2 meter Trojan 
and I love it. It's one of my favorite planes. And here goes nothing. Okay. Interesting. Thanks for choosing Horizon Hobby. Comes with an extra prop. That's interesting. I wonder if the extra prop is a different size because there's one on the fuse right now. Oh. Hmm. So we'll see. All right. So we're going to pop this out. We've got the landing gear here. Uh, these are fixed gear. The 1.2 meter has retractable landing gear. Okay. We're going to obviously pull all this out. Foam to protect the foam as per typical horizon. Bubble wrap, that's kind of weird. Ooh, fairly smooth for the 1.1 meter size class. Looks nice, obviously they're labeled left and right here. For the landing gear, ailerons only, big ailerons. Then we've got the control surfaces here. So that looks good. 1.1 meters, I'm six foot tall. So that's real easy to store. Okay. Lots of foam and different things in here. Get this stuff out. Interesting, this packaging looks like they must be offering it in a, possibly a ready to fly as well. Pilots in there, like the pilot. Looks good. There's a piece of tape here and then a magnet. That tape will go out to help make it easier to release. A couple of keys to hold that in and then show them the instrument cluster. Really nice looking canopy. Okay. Oh, that's just tape. Okay, I've got one more piece of foam to pull out here. That's gonna allow us to pull the fuse. This is gonna be a really easy unbox. Okay, so we've got the prop here. What does this say? Remove before flight. Really? What is this? That is weird. I wonder why they do that. Why? There's like little covers on them. Are they afraid people are gonna get cut? Is that gonna stop it from getting cut? I don't really understand. That's very weird. That is weird. Okay. Big opened breather vents there. Nice decal application. It's extremely light. And then this has the AR631 receiver, which has a singular antenna out here. That's interesting. It looks like this is where you're gonna get your ESC feed from. And this is gonna be for safe select fine plug, but you can also use this. There's a push button here. Elevator looks like we're using A382 13 gram servos for the rudder and would be elevator. Of course, it's not installed yet. So we'll come right back to that. Everything is looking pretty much up to snuff with what I expect. Okay, so the elevator slips out, guys. Look at this, show them from above a little bit. You have to kind of slide that out. This has carbon fiber reinforcement here and here. Okay, so that's good. Really flat, simple elevator. Everything so far just seems really simple and well done, light, which is what you want to see in this size class because if it's not light, you're gonna, it's gonna fly that way. And uh, you won't like it. I always have to put these puzzles back together. So we'll put the puzzle back together, get this stuff cleaned up, and we'll come right back to build it. Okay, so we're gonna put this T28 Trojan together. So the first thing I'm noticing is that there is a uh, label here, and it's so strange, because I, I have a sneaky suspicion. Oh, dang it, I ah, tripped. Those always fall off. They always fall off every know. time. I don't know what the deal is. So hmm. that's step number one. Step number two is looking at all the plugs in here. It looks like this is going to be our aileron plug. Um, this is already, 
is gonna be used for AS3X only binding, safe select binding. We'll have to read the manual because this has the push button too. I'd prefer to use the push button if possible. Uh, this does have the IC3 connection on it, which is kind of nice, and it is a smart ESC. This is two through six capable ESC, but this plane is capable on uh, three or four S 2200 is what it's designed for. So that's what we're gonna try to use it with. Um, interestingly, looking in there, I'm not sure exactly where the battery is gonna go. Oh, it's gonna go into this, this pocket here. Mm -hmm. We have the batteries laid out. We'll get to that shortly. So the first step, of course, is gonna be we have to install the wing and this canopy could go on, but I'll wait to do that actually. We got a plane stand. Oof. Nine and a half by seven and a half prop, right, camera crew? Yes. Um, it does come with the same spare prop, so that's nice. You're gonna need a screwdriver long enough to reach into the cowl so that you can reach to a set screw to put in your landing gear. I'm just picking this servo plug out. Mine just was kind of stuck in there a little bit. Not sure where this is gonna pass through. I'm assuming we're just gonna pass those through the middle like this. But I almost wonder if it'd be easier to just get the Y cable out and plug it in first. They don't really indicate that in the instructions. They assume we're smart enough to figure it out, but. Um, okay, so that just goes back, it keys in and then drops down. And the screws, there's only two of them in the bag. It looks like we're only gonna need one of the two screws. Mm -hmm. This is gonna so. be a super simple install. The assembly is so quick, this is just incredible. I got a number two Phillips screwdriver here, so we're just gonna drop this screw in, and that joins the wing to the fuse. Looks like a standard number two fits in there just fine. The noise you're hearing is the plane rubbing against the stand. So that went together as a big plastic piece that's gonna hold that pressure, that's really nice. Okay, so while we're upside down, let's put the landing gear in. There's left and right. It doesn't matter which one because they're ambidextrous at this point. See, they're the same. So you just drop that straight down into the hole and then you spin them until they click in. And then you can take them out at the field if you wanna do some grass landings. Only complaint I can say is those clips, um, being that they're going forward, if you land, I guess you probably catch grass in those, but I don't think they'll break because the dihedral of the wing should keep them up high enough. I don't think it's gonna be a big problem. This will be a light enough plane. Nose gear is keyed here. See this little keyed spot there? Mm -hmm. You see that? Yep. So that one's gonna go forward because that's where there's a set screw. You see the set screw? That's what I'm gonna reach in through the cowl. You see how my screwdriver's uh, going in there? Okay, yep, I see that. Okay, so I'm gonna slide this in here. You kinda gotta walk that assembly back. I'm gonna pull this screw back like half a turn, maybe a three quarters of a turn and just get to the spot where that drops down in there. And as I tighten this screw, then that should keep the steerable nose gear in position. Okay, so just tightening, tightening, tightening. Okay, so I would say that's all that it's gonna, that feels really solid, that's great. Okay, so this thing is extremely light, guys. That, that's crazy how light it is. I'm actually really happy because light planes fly light, which is good. It sounds kind of like a stupid thing to say, but believe me, if you've had a heavy plane, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're sliding this through. Okay, so that's in. Do we have to tape it on? How does that get secured? It's taped on. Apply four pieces of tape on the fuselage mount to the top and bottom. The, the tape is stabilizer. provided. Mm -hmm. It's in the bag. I'm just looking how I can center it. Is there some obvious way? I mean, there's definitely a flat, so that part's easy. But I'm just looking. There's a spot right here where you can tell kind of that you're centered up because I'm just looking right here. And then I'm comparing that size gap to right here. Okay, so I feel like it's centered good enough. There's no real obvious markings. And so I'm also looking 
at where this plastic stops, I wanna see that that gap is even along this length here, okay? So right here I'm looking. I wanna see that this is even and that this is even. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that you're square and true. And uh, inside the bag of goodies, they gave us some extra rubber hose, a bind plug, and then these little pieces of tape, which uh, incidentally, they end up working really nice. I've tried using regular tape and it works fine too, but these are really super, super strong. It's clear, so it's gonna be hard to see on video, but I'm sure you guys can believe me. This is not a hard step. It's a lot easier than putting a screw in, but at the same time, I would probably prefer to see screws to hold a control surface and horizontal stabilizer down. That being said, if you can get away with getting the CG better this way, I suppose that's one reason why you would do it. It's really easy to apply though. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to decide, do I want to tape the bottom? Um, I think it says four pieces. Yeah, but it so. doesn't say the top and the bottom, does it? That's what I'm trying to yes, figure out. Yes, it does say top and bottom okay. of the horizontal stabilizer. So I'll flip this back into the plane stand. It's, it's okay. It's okay. You're not going to be able to see it very good anyway. I'm just, I'm just basically making sure I'm not taping down little foam remnants mm -hmm. because there was a bunch of that that came out of the packaging. So this is my third of four pieces. This will be the fourth of four. But if you've had like a little sport cub or something and you're wanting to move up to a bigger plane, but you're nervous about assembling a plane. <laughs> yeah, this would be super easy. This would be pretty easy. Okay, so let's show them what I'm doing here. I'm just attaching the control rod. There's a clevis here that's attached to the elevator control rod. And then this is where it's gonna plug in. So now I need to figure out which hole that goes to. You can stay where you are there, camera crew, I got it. It says in the, doc, in the document, looks like it goes to the outside hole. So this is gonna be where they recommend it goes. At some point, maybe I'll end up changing that once I've flown it. And then I wanna look to see that that's level. It's pointed down a little bit, so. I'm gonna probably have to take, and assuming this is centered, which it may not be, I'm gonna spin that a couple of times, probably two times. Mm. There we go, that's like probably four times. Okay, let's just double check. Look at that from the end. Yeah, it's nice and centered. Okay, that's what we're going for. So once you've got that centered, this just clicks in. And once that's clicked in, feels like it's maybe not. Oh, there it goes. Then you can just slide this back and that rubber, it's not an O-ring, but it's like a gas tube that's been clipped to length. That will keep that from releasing. Although it's kind of weird, it should click. Mm, it just doesn't feel like it's clicking. No, it's in there though. I can see the tip, tip coming through there. Okay, so the next thing for us to do is to flip the plane over. Obviously, we're gonna, at some point, we're gonna have to mark the CG, but we can't really test the CG yet because we don't have all the stuff in there yet. Um, but we're really close. We just have the canopy to put on yet. Mm -hmm. And then the battery, that was pretty easy assembly. So I think we're gonna fly this on 4S to begin with. If it's rated for three and 4S, 2200, this is a 2200 3S and this is a 2200 4S Smart Pack. Okay, so they have the IC3 ends respectively. So with a 4S, oh, we do have to land these two wires for the ailerons. We might as well do that now, I suppose. Okay, we got brown going toward the camera crew. I'm gonna rotate it. Now it's going toward my left hand. Okay, so those are plugged in brown to brown. And I'm just studying the cable. This cable, the brown is going to my left hand again and the brown is to the left hand. So when I plug these together, they're keyed, but you can force them in backward. See this? Brown to brown, orange to orange, red's in the middle. Brown to brown, orange to orange, red in the middle. 
Okay, cool, that was super easy. And you don't wanna interfere with this linkage because that is gonna be a moving part for us. So I'm gonna just kinda see about sliding those over there. Except then I'm gonna have to get my, my battery slid in and out every time. So I'm gonna actually move this, that's in a bad spot. Uh, I want that out of the way so that every time I put the battery in, I don't have problems. How does that work? It's pretty evident the battery is supposed to go here. Okay, let's try with 3S and see how it fits. See, that fits perfectly. But then I wonder if this is supposed to be going the other way. Yeah, it's gone. That's nice. That holds it really securely. It does. So, it's not going to come out, which is real nice. Now, is this canopy going to give room for the cable to go on top? It's hard to tell it because is. look, if this is plugged in right here on top, does that mean that we're going to have this thing clamped down tight on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. it is. So do you have to go cable first? How is that going to work? I don't know. I don't know. I got to figure it out. And then look at this. There's one other problem here. Guys, check this stuff. This is easy to fix, but I don't know why they sent it like that. You see this? It's tangled around the control. You got to watch out for stuff like that. I mean, Horizon usually does better than everybody else that I've noticed. But the thing is, even, even they'll miss something like that once in a while. Brown is going to the front. See how I had to move that? Now it's not tangled around that linkage. So that's important. You want to keep that from getting tangled. It's just strange. Now I could probably, I don't think I can fit that through with the leads forward because that's in there pretty good. And if I go, see how the lead kind of protrudes from the side here? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to go through very well. But let's try it. I'm feeding it up there, see if it'll go. There is kind of a relief in the middle, it looks like. Oh, it does go. Ow. It goes. So then your leads are up here. So I guess I'm not gonna complain too much. That's pretty good. Okay, so then this this is where we're gonna have our our binding plug, but I'd prefer to use the binding button if possible. So now that we have that battery in that spot, let's just tuck this stuff in here and see how it fits. Okay. Oop, you know what I forgot? You see why they give you that piece of tape? Little tape. Oh man, that magnet's pretty, pretty strong. See that tape, guys? Pull that up first. I think I'm gonna probably tape the tape up because I don't want that to fall down. Okay, mm -hmm. that's really long. You can see that's strong. Yeah. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay, cool. First of all, thoughts on the, the look of the aircraft. It looks really good. Obviously the fixed gear, probably leave a little something to be desired. It's real simple looking. But the thing is you can also pull those out relatively easy if you wanna just do grass landings. And then you're thinking, but Brian, won't I break the prop? Probably not. You'll be surprised how well you can do without breaking the prop. Uh, that being said, Let's look at CG for just a second. So center of gravity is a very important part. So it's 67 to 72 millimeters back from the leading edge of the wing. So 67 to 72. And they're showing at the wing root. So the wing root kind of has this flare and then it goes out almost straight. So I want to go 67 to 72. So 67 is going to be my first mark. So here's 67. Sixty-seven. The wing root. Boy, that's ambiguous, isn't it? Yes, it is. Because there's like this bulge here where the the moldings have kind of disseminated from one another. Okay, so that's basically where it needs to be. There's one mark, and then seventy-two is here. There's the second mark. So this plane is really pretty, so I kind of hate to mark it up a bunch. 
but CG marks are pretty important. Although the way the battery goes on, I don't think there's gonna be a lot of flexibility on this plane. Okay, so I'm just doing the same thing over here. I'm just marking in the opposite order because that's just easier with the calipers. So first 72, then 67. So 67, 67. Is that marker wiping off? No. It looks like it is. Does it look like it is? Yeah, that's weird. Huh. You must have a really good coat of paint on this thing. Okay, so as you can see, the two marks on either side. So I'm just gonna try to flip this plane over and fingers go right in between the two bumps. As you can see with 4S, we're just spot on. That thing is nice and level. And I don't suspect it's, to be honest with you, I bet this plane will fly pretty much no matter what you do. If you put a 7,000 4S in there, it's probably not gonna do very good. <laughs> But if you're in the 2200 size class, I think you're gonna be fine. That being said, there is plenty of room for a longer battery. Problem is if you go to a 3200, it's, it's taller in this dimension. So I don't think it's gonna fit. You're gonna have to do foam work. Mm -hmm. um, okay, cool. So we got everything done there. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the radio system. So we'll come right back and do the NX6 setup. All right, folks. So we're here with the T28 1.1 meter from Horizon Hobby. And what we're gonna be doing is, this is an E-Flight product. We're gonna be going through the NX6 setup for binding and then obviously doing radio setup. So first of all, if, if you don't already know this, I always recommend people build their models in the transmitter, but you can also download them. Um, I don't ever do that. I'm not gonna show you how to do it because I wanna teach you how to use this tool. This is an expensive tool and you should be using it. But if you wanna download them, that's fine too. Just go ahead and do that. Uh, but for those of you, you that are trying to kind of learn to get in the hobby, I want to teach you how to do this because you can do it for any plane that you get. It doesn't have to be one of the bind and flies, uh, but it just has to be DSMX or DSM2 compatible. So that's just the protocol that this radio system talks. So anyway, all right. So we've got all the build done. We've got the, we actually have a battery in here. It's just not plugged in yet because we will be going through the binding procedure. But in order to bind this plane, you have to have a model created and then you bind to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the camera crew come around and we're gonna go through the full setup procedure. So, <clears throat> excuse me. There's two different ways you can bind this. You, well, there's actually four different ways. Um, each have with safe select enabled and without safe select enabled. <clears throat> um, you can use the push button on the receiver to activate with or without safe select, or you can use a bind plug for with or without safe select, okay? So in our case, we're gonna be using the two um, choices. We're gonna actually go for safe select enabled because it's just as easy to set up. And we'll show you how to do that with the push button. The basic predominant difference is when you press and release the button, or if you're using the bind plug, whether or not you leave it plugged in through the duration of the binding procedure. And that will indicate whether or not the receiver is safe enabled or disabled. So now why would you care? Safe is what auto levels the plane, safe select in this case. And safe select is like a, a light version of full safe where you have an intermediate, beginner, and experience mode. But in this case, the most critical part of safe is auto automatically leveling when you let go of the stick. So new pilots don't, don't really connect the dots. They just think when they let go of the sticks, the plane just goes straight and level anyway. That's not what happens. Usually the plane goes like this, a million pieces. <laughs> so when you let go of the sticks, there's two different things that are running on an AS3X driven plane. So this has AS3X, which is artificial three axis stabilization and artificial three axis stabilization. And that's the heart of the auto leveling, which is safe sensor aided flight envelope. So what we're going to do is we're going to activate with safe select which is gonna allow you to use the auto leveling, but you can turn that off. So we'll assign a switch that will allow you to turn it off. Now, I don't fly with safe on anymore, but when I was learning, I did all the time exclusively. And I was limited to buying models that only had safe until I got to the point where I was comfortable flying without. Now, AS3X is, AS3X is also known as a stabilizer. Um, and the stabilizer will help the plane to fly more stable because as you're flying along, the wind will blow it around and it will cause it to yaw pitch and roll indiscriminate of your inputs. So when you pull back on the stick, this elevator goes up and then in, in response, the plane goes up if it's got enough airspeed. 
And then when you push down on the same stick, it's gonna go down. And then when you move the rudder, which is this stick on a mode two, it's gonna point the nose that way, which is gonna yaw the plane to the right. And if you move the stick this way, then it's gonna yaw the plane to the left. And then of course your throttle is gonna go up and down in your elevator and your ailerons. So the ailerons, same thing, one goes up, one goes down, and it rolls the plane. What the AS3X does is it, it keeps track of if you're telling it to move it or if it's getting blown by the environment. Now, how does it know that? Because it has uh, gyroscopes in it. So basically the, well, accelerometers in this case, the accelerometers know that there is a yaw uh, or a roll, a pitch or a yaw happening. And it can compare that to what you're doing at the time. Have I induced the roll? or has the wind induced the roll? And it's very easy to tell because when you move the stick, it can tell that it's trying to move the stick because it's moving the ailerons for you, okay? And then when you pull back on the stick, it knows it's trying to, yaw, it's trying to lift up the nose. And when you use the, the rudder, it knows it's trying to yaw. Well, if you're not giving that input and the plane starts yawing, that means there's something wrong. It's gonna try to correct. We'll show you that in action after all this is done. But that's the quick 10,000 foot view and we're gonna get into it right now. So the first thing you're gonna do on your transmitter is you're gonna turn it on, you press and hold this little Spectrum logo, logo. And you can see I got the F4U Corsair here. So I'm gonna click, scroll all the way down to the bottom, go to system setup, disconnect your radio. That means the radio is off currently. I'm gonna to go to model select, scroll to the bottom, it says add new model. I'm gonna click. It's gonna give me the choice to create different model types, like a drone, a sailplane, a helicopter, or in this case, an acro, which is known as an airplane. So I'm gonna click create. And it's gonna create the model, it does take a second to do that. Now this color is not necessarily the color you may choose, it just happens to film the best. You can do a variety of different colors, it's called matte options, or palette options rather. And that is something you can do from the regular function list. So you can see we got a new acro model created here. It says five minutes, it says the name and it says the number and then it shows a picture of the airplane and it's got a little timer that's running here, okay? That's the volume, you hit back, you can scroll up and down. There are voice alerts on the NX6 as well as the eight and the 10, okay? The six is the lowest of the line card, the antenna moves, this is the bind button, and then we have switches all over the place, okay? So when you click, that goes into the function list. You'll notice that the RF is still on, so you can be making adjustments within the function list without shutting off RF. But to do all of the system setup, you do have to shut off the RF, the radio frequency, okay? I'm gonna stay in the menu by hitting back. That's a back button, this is a cancel button, okay? This is the FN button, I, I don't even actually know that I've used it yet. Right. But you can use that to do actions, like if you wanna deploy, you know, like a bomb drop or something like that on a, a more robust uh, system. So anyway, click. First thing we wanna do is on the pages of this manual, this is one of the reasons why Horizon Hobby or E-Flight in this case puts together such a good plane. Horizon Hobby is the mother company and then E-Flight is one of the brands within the Horizon name. This is what you would use if you were setting up a plug and fly or if you wanted to use like a Futaba receiver or some other brand of receiver, you can get the control surfaces to do this. But since you've got a bind and fly, you don't necessarily have to worry about this. You can worry about it if you want. It's gonna tell you your flight time, five minutes. Okay, so that's the first thing we'll look at. So within the function list, you click, and then you scroll down. So I'm just kind of rolling this little thing here. Timer, it says countdown, one time active. So what that means is when the stick goes over 25% in this case, it's gonna start the timer from five down to nothing. When that's done, there's gonna be an option for some different noises or actions that would happen. So every minute I have that inhibited. The inhibited means it's off, it's not gonna do that function. Okay, so at one minute, um, I guess we could do voice. At 30 seconds, we'll leave that inhibited. At 20 seconds, we'll inhibit. In 10 seconds, we'll do voice. So it's gonna count down 10, nine, eight, seven, okay? And then expiration, I want tone and vibrate. And then every minute thereafter, we're gonna do a tone, okay? Because at that point, we'll just not want the additional distraction. Next, see how it says all these different things. So it's got tone, that's tone, by the way. There's a high pitch tone and a low pitch tone. You don't have to worry about that. So now, you can see it started, you press clear, and it clears it, okay? Back does, brings you up your volume. And then you can also see the voltage of your transmitter. This runs on a five volt circuit. So it's a little bit different system than previous ones, which ran on a little bit higher voltage. So you'll also notice that there is a USB plug right there. 
That's USB micro. And you can charge this with a regular USB micro plug, which is really nice because people got a million of them sitting around from their cell phones. All right, so that being said, now we have to set up the rest of the model. So the first thing I would do after I set up, um, we already set the CG, we already set the timer. I'm gonna set throttle cut. Throttle cut's a safety feature. I wanna uninhibit it by selecting. I clicked it and now I'm gonna select which switch. I want switch H, which is here. This one right here, I want it to be on when it's back toward me. So now I can move the stick and on this little monitor, you can see that it's not moving the throttle until I unlock it, if you will. You can see it's moving up and down now, okay? Now, incidentally, you can walk back to the regular mode and you can see that it's, it's got a percentage here, okay? When it's locked, that percentage still tells the absolute position of the stick, even if that's locked. But in monitor mode, which is by rolling over one position, you can see that it shows what's going to the plane, okay? So when I unlock this, that comes alive, okay? But then it shuts off. That's called throttle cut, throttle hold. Um, and that's a very important feature. Get used to using it, it'll save your fingers. Or it can save your fingers. Things go wrong, so just be aware of that. Um, so you always wanna play it safe if you can but just uh, do your best to use the safety features if you can. All right, so I'm gonna flip a few more pages here. And once you get to a certain page, it'll look like this. It says computerized transmitter setup. So in this case, this is a computerized transmitter, okay? Sometimes uh, called programmable timers, okay? Uh, this talks about dual rates. It talks about Expo. It doesn't really tell you a ton on here. It's just right here is where they tell you to set things to. If you set them to this, you'll have generally good experience. I'm gonna show you how I set the dual rates in Expo, which is a little bit different than what the manual recommends. The only time I deviate from that is when you have a flight controller installed like on a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, aircraft, uh, or drones, because sometimes flight controllers get screwed up by that. Okay, so without further ado, we're gonna jump into we're gonna jump into system setup. I wanna change one thing under model type. We've got that. If you change this, it's gonna reset your model. I just wanna show you that. Model name. So I'm gonna name this. This is already number 10, colon, space. Now, by the way, you can go over here and you can change that, but I'm not gonna change it because it happens to be the 10th model in my NX6. On my DX18, I think I like 90 or 80 yeah, something. something like I don't know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot. So you move the cursor, which is an arrow, to what you wanna modify and you click and then it turns to a black and I'm just gonna name it this. And so I'll do the first letter and then we'll pause because it's just boring to watch somebody scroll numbers in. So we'll come right back when we get the scroll done. Okay, so it says T28 Trojan 1.1 meter. Okay, so once you get that typed in, then you go back. The aircraft type, of course, is gonna tell you what type of wing type it is. You can hear the timer is working still, but that's fine. It's not gonna change anything in our case. I lost my page here, guys. Okay, so on page seven, we were just looking at all the rest of the settings. So it tells you right here, aircraft type, it tells you what, what to set it to. Wing type is aileron and then normal for tail. But there's one more trick, you can go next, and then you can scroll down and change the image to a picture of a T28. Sweet, okay, cool. So that'll make it easy for you to tell that you've got the right model. Um, I recommend always in your model name, put the size, because you're gonna get more than one T28 given enough time. Okay, so now that we have that done, I'm gonna clear my timer because I don't want that going off here in a second. So they want us to, this is where you're gonna look, and I always just have always used the DX18 because that's what I was used to before, and that seems to be really close to um, what we're gonna need on the NX6 because of the, the nature of the, the programming uh, menus. So set all transmitter programming to blank acro. We did at the beginning, dual rate set to 170. So they're suggesting uh, high at 100 and low at 70. That just means that like a high rate would be when you pull the stick all the way down, I'll go to monitor mode. On monitor mode, when I pull the stick all the way down, it would be minus 100. If you had it on low rates, that'd be minus 70, meaning that the elevator would only deflect to, instead of 100% up, it would go to 70% up. I don't like utilizing um, dual rates for a variety of reasons, unless required by a really pitch sensitive plane. I prefer to use Expo because Expo allows me that when I pull that stick all the way back, it's 100% out at the end. 
but at the beginning of the stroke, it will be less. And then when you get to a certain sweet spot, depending on the percentage of expo you set, you're going to be getting the same output as though you had no expo. So what that does is that helps for beginners that happen to, uh, most beginners tend to over control the plane. So in my case, I usually talk about doing uh, three different settings and I'll show you how to do those now. This is my default, but if you want to do theirs, it tells you right here, aileron, elevator, and rudder. It says expo at 15, 10, and 10, and then on low rates, five, five, and five. Okay, so I'm gonna do this myself. I'm gonna go to dual rates and expo. That's in the function list. Then you click, and it shows aileron. So you scroll, you scroll down, you click aileron, and you can choose elevator or rudder. In our case, we'll just do ailerons first. It says switch, you can make it on, or you can set it to a switch. I'm gonna set it to F, which is a three position switch. I wanna have my least expo or the most sensitive plane, the neutral where I wanna start from, and then the less sensitive plane. So if I need to really calm it down, I can get to the ground. And I'm gonna start flying in the middle, and I'm gonna have a factor of about double, and then I'm a factor of about half. So it gives me the opportunity to take off, get flying. If things are good, we just leave it there, which is many times what we do. But if we have problems because it's too sensitive, I can go here. And if it's too insensitive, I can go here, okay? So starting from the lowest setting, whoops. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna set my expo to, let's just say 10. They're recommending 10 for the default setting. So I'm gonna go five. Then my second setting, I'll do 10, oh, dang it, 10. And then for my top setting, I'll do 15, and I will drop my rates back down to 90. Okay, so you see this is the least interaction, the least uh, intervention there, then the next, then the most, okay? So now I wanna click from aileron, I wanna go to elevator. So now they're suggesting that the ailerons need a little bit more expo so actually, why don't we, why don't we just go to 10, then we'll go to 15, then we'll go to 20, okay? The ailerons were the one that they wanted the most on, and you can see that from this little thing here. It says aileron expo set to 15, and the rest were set to 10. Okay, so ailerons, then we'll scroll over to elevator. We'll go down to switch, click it, assign it to switch F, and then in the lowest setting, or the least intervention, We'll do five, then we'll do 10, then we'll do 15, and we'll drop the rates down in this mode to about 90, okay? And then I'm gonna go to rudder. I'm gonna switch this to F. The lowest setting is gonna be five, then we'll go to 10, then we'll go to 15, and we'll drop the rates back down to 90, okay? So now, I'll demonstrate. If we go over here, Sorry guys. So if we go over here and we're in the middle mode, when I pull back on the stick, it goes to 100%. Now watch this, drops back to 90. You see that? That's the top mode. And then it stays at 100 and it stays at 100, but that drops down. So the least sensitive setting is here and then the most incredibly sensitive setting is here, okay? And what happens is now at the very middle of the stack, you see I've got it kind of at minus 11. See how it drops down? and it goes up and drops down and goes up. That's because in the middle of the stick, that's where most of the output happens, okay, for the expo. And that's why there's this little chart here. See how it changes? That's what it's gonna do for output. So as you move the aileron stick, you can see what the output's gonna be. You have 100% of the stick output is only gonna equate to 90% output. Okay, so now watch this in the middle. It's like 30%. See how it changes the output value? So 30 equals 22, 30 equals 28, 30 equals 30, 35 equals 31. And it's hard to hold it still guys, but you get the point. The idea is it's a very small, it's a subtle change, but it's enough to make a plane that would be otherwise touchy, really pretty easy to control. And that in tandem with the stabilization makes for a rock solid feeling plane, which is why the Horizon Hobby E-Flight lineup Always flies really good. Hobby zone, same thing. Okay? So this was branded, I believe, as a hobby zone before. And now this is E-Flight. So I'm not sure why they did that or if maybe I'm mistaken. So either way. Um, all right, coming back to setup. I think we have all the setup done. 
We have throttle cut, we have dual rates and uh, expo set up, and then we also have the wing type set up. There's no flap, so we don't have to set that up, uh, which makes this a pretty easy setup. Mm -hmm. So now we're ready to bind. So throttle cuts on, all my sticks are in their neutral position, okay? And now we can go ahead and get ready to bind. So let's look over the binding instructions. This is on like page two, I think. Nope. Nope, I was way off. Page nine. So we're concentrating on this one here, safe select enabled. So when safe select is enabled, the control surfaces cycle back and forth twice. So I'll show you the, the AS3X dance twice, okay? So in order to do this, we wanna have the transmitter off or you can go into bind mode. There is a way to go into bind mode with the transmitter on. I'm just gonna turn it off because it's easy. This is where your bind button is. It says bind on it. That's also called switch I. See how there's a, a little I there? And then it also says the word bind. Okay, so you're gonna press and hold that when you're ready to bind. We're not quite ready to bind. We have to enter bind mode. Okay, we can leave this canopy out of the way for now. The battery is currently unplugged. You've got our IC3 plugs here. These things are super easy to plug in together. This is where you wanna be a little bit careful because it's the first time you're gonna be doing this. You wanna make sure you have the plane secured. If you're, if you're in any doubt, just take off the prop. So it says to throttle low, connect power, then press and hold the bind button. When the orange flashing, uh, the orange flash, orange light flashes, then we're gonna bind the transmitter, then we're gonna release. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky. I'm gonna have to do this kind of all at once here. Okay, you good? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're gonna kind of watch the plane then. Mm -hmm. So this gets plugged in. We're just gonna hold still. Then I'm gonna press this button and hold it. And then I'm gonna press the bind button over here and I'm gonna press the power button, okay? It says binding. It says binding on here. Come on now. Oh, I'm letting go of that button now. You don't have to hold that, you just, bind failed. Okay, so it's flashing right now. So I'm gonna let go of that button and I'm gonna start again. So if that ever happens, it's not a big deal, don't worry, it, sometimes this happens. It's wireless world, so sometimes you just got a little bit too far apart or a little bit too close. So I'm gonna turn this back off, but you can see kind of how it's challenging because you have to have that button pressed and held through the entire sequence if you wanna have safe select enabled, okay? Otherwise, it's quite simple. If you want it disabled, you plug in the battery, you press it, it starts flashing, you let go, and then you've got both hands to work here. Being that this has a push button instead of a rocker or a slider switch, it's just kind of challenging to hit all those buttons at the same time, okay? If you're trying to show it on camera, especially. Okay, so here we go. So we're gonna plug in the power. We're gonna press this button and we're gonna hold it. Can you put one hand up here just to hold that so it stays tipped down? Yep. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to press and hold the bind button and I'm gonna press that for just a second to wake it up. It's coming on. It says binding. Okay, can let go of the bind button. Okay, so now I can let go. All right, so now we're gonna let go of it. I'm gonna have it in my hand here in case something goes wrong. One dance, two dances. Okay, usually at this point, I'm gonna power down the plane and then power it back up. Power it down. I power down the radio for good measure. The reason I do this is to ensure I have 100% for sure good bind. Okay, so this is off. Now I'm gonna go through the normal startup sequence, which is to turn on the transmitter, make sure all the sticks are in the right position, everything is pulled up the right model, and then plug in the battery, securing the plane to make sure nothing takes off on us. Look for two dances. Takes a second to initiate. During that period of inaction, it's actually finding its uh, home position. It's making sure it's still level. And uh, if it's out of level, it will fail to bind. Or not bind, it'll fail to start up. Okay, so now at this point, I'll go ahead and throw the cover on. Canopy on. 
Okay, make sure that's solid. Now, first thing I'm gonna test is my throttle cut is on. I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna move the stick up. Nothing happens, that's perfect, that's what we wanna see. Now I'm gonna turn throttle cut off and I'm gonna give it throttle. Full throttle and off and throttle cuts on and tested. Okay, so everything is working there. Elevator goes up, elevator goes down. Ailerons roll left, ailerons roll right. Yaw left, yaw right. And you'll notice it's not moving the surfaces very far. That's because we're in safe right now. Okay, so safe select is on. And how do you know safe is on? First of all, AS3X does not get activated until you go over 25% on your throttle. You can hear AS3X is working. And then look, we're in safe. It's trying to level the aircraft. You go to the upside down position and you go to about halfway and it's gonna try to find, you see the rudder move? It's trying to find the quickest route to level. So you see how this would be rolling the wing down. Now look at the elevator up. Look what happens to the elevator. It's trying to push the plane level and then it's gonna level the plane. It's gonna automatically keep leveling it, okay? So now we wanna turn that off and just have AS3X. So let's talk about how to do that. You can turn it off and then turn it back on. I want it, I want it to be switchable. So the typical method is flip the switch after holding the sticks down and in. You have to have an assigned, you have to have a channel assigned to whatever switch you wanna use. In this case, because I don't have flaps, I'll probably go ahead and I don't have retractable landing gear, I'll go ahead and use switch A. Many times I set it to switch D, but I have a harder time getting to switch D, okay? See that's assigned to auxiliary one. This one's assigned to gear, which makes sense. So sticks down and in, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, you'll notice nothing happened. We're gonna try again, one, there it goes. It is switching. It didn't dance though. That was kind of weird. That was kind of weird. Maybe that's a new thing in this new receiver. I haven't seen this receiver before, so we'll see how it goes. Throttle cut is still on just for safety. Okay, safe is on. Safe is off. Okay. So with safe off, it's not moving any of the control surfaces except for when I lift up quickly, then it moves. That's AS3X. Rudder's moving. And what I'm doing is I'm looking down and I wanna see that rudder move the direction I move in the plane. And it is, but it's very subtle. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but I can see it. So when you get yours ready to fly, that'll be the first test you do. Test all three axis, elevator. I can see it, but it's gonna be really hard to see on camera. Okay, so now when I want safe on, the stick is back. When I want safe off, Excuse me, I said that backward. This is safe on right here. So I wanna rotate that. So in order to rotate that, I'm gonna go into my function list, click into servo setup, and I'm gonna go travel, click, and then go to reverse, and I'm gonna to go to gear and reverse it by clicking that. Now it's kind of backward there, okay? So now safe should be off. Easiest way to tell, halfway. And then I want safe on, yep, trying to find level. Okay. So this plane is ready to fly at this point. Real easy setup, a lot more explanation than I would normally do, but since this is kind of a, a beginner type of plane, I wanna make sure to, to talk a lot about what things do and how they do it. So that being said, um, if you guys are happy with this plane, if you think it's gonna be something you wanna buy, you can help our channel tremendously by buying from the links that are in the description below. So if you click the little ellipsis or the more or whatever it is that YouTube has changed it to, just look below the video and there'll be a description, a video description. If you click on that, there'll be a bunch of links that come up right at the top of the list, especially on an unbox build radio setup and then Maiden Flight, of course, a Maiden comes at the beginning nowadays. Then you can click and I'll tell you what plane I'm using and then the batteries that are usually that I picked, you can copy me exactly. And then a lot of times I'll go ahead and show the transmitter too. Sometimes I don't show all of that, but if you scroll a little bit further down, you can see all the different things we recommend. In this case, that really helps us, of course, liking, subscribing, uh, that helps too. And we have literally thousands of videos, I think like 1,360 right now. So if you guys wanna learn about the hobby, this is a place to do it. I mean, there's other good sources out there, believe me, but 
we have a lot to get you started. And this would be a really good plane for a beginner. I have flown this plane a long time ago. It didn't belong to me. So I'm excited to fly it for myself. I have the 1.2 meter downstairs that has retracts and flaps, and it's a great plane as well. So I'll probably go ahead and link to that one as well. But in the meantime, this beautiful new release from E-Flight is gonna be gorgeous, and I am just hoping that we can get it out and show some awesome footage of this thing flying. Really fun plane, and there's nothing quite like coming in and greasing a landing with one of these planes. It is so much fun, and I'm sure you're gonna love it too. So definitely come back for more. We appreciate you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Definitely check the description and buy from the links there. You'll help us out.